Fanny Fanny, an audacious lady in the full bloom of youth, stood alone on the beach, gazing over the cobalt water with her daring brunette pools. Her charcoal hair danced lightly in the ocean breeze, tickling against one cheek as she tried to keep still despite her impatient excitement. Resting her cheek against one hand as she traced a finger along her silver necklace, she wore an alabaster bikini top, her pearly back covered only by a thin bit of string and a pair of indigo slacks, her coiffure flowed in an even, ebon torn past her shoulders complimenting her rebellious, milky massage. Her thoughts wandered to her days in Joey's company. It must have been fate in mortal form that brought them together. She knew from the moment she laid eyes on him that they were meant to be. From then on, they were inseparable. They shared every part of their life with each other. That was how it was to this very day. Fanfet, Joey said simply with an admiring look over and a beaming grin. His mahogany windows to his soul, eyes, complimented his milky mane brushing against his ears, belying his rebellious heart. He was dressed in that exotic fashion in which he was most comfortable. He had a tone of a slender body covered with tawny skin. An elaborate tattoo snaked its way around his visible skin. A prominent scar stood out on his Colored skin. As Fan Fan drew near, she caught a note of his familiar perfume. Birds, earthy and spicy. She smiled to herself. It always reminded her of the time they shared. Joey, it's nice of you to show up on time, Fan Fan said passionate crystals flashing. Last week was an accident, he protested. I'm just messing with you. She kissed his flushed face. With that, they began to walk along the beach. So, what's been up with you lately, Fenton asked. She folded her hands behind her back absently as she looked expectantly at Joey. Nothing, he answered. He paused and, for a moment, stared back at her uncomfortably before looking up at the cobalt sky. Why are you looking at me like that? Looking at you like what? Like... Like that, he gesticulated furiously, auburn eyes bright with a mixture of excitement and befuddlement. Was I supposed to do something? And then laughed. No, nothing special. I just wanted to know how you've been doing. She wrapped her arms around his neck and pulled him toward her. Catch a kiss, she murmured. Oh, Joey, I love you. Having calmed down a bit, he grasped one of her hands in his firm ones and muttered, I love you too. And then laid her head on his shoulder and breathed. You're just right for me, you know? With you, I can, I can really be myself. Fanfan, I feel 
the same way. I mean, sometimes I'm worried I'll forget your birthday. What kind of man doesn't worry about that, right? She looked at him with eyes narrowed in mock irritation. You do remember what my birthday is, don't you? Of course I do, he protested. I've kept it in mind all this time so I could prepare a surprise. Embarrassment swept it across his face as he realized that he had blown surprise. Ah, uh, I mean... Nathan's lips curled in a little smile. A surprise? For me? That's really sweet of you. I can't wait. It's still a while before your birthday, though, Joey muttered. Shut up and kiss me. While they walked down the beach, they spotted a natural alcove in the cliff bordering the beach. Oh! Is that? Beckham began. Joey pressed a finger to her lips and said, Yeah, shh, come on. The natural alcove was covered in creeping vines with leaves and tiny flowers. The sound of the ocean echoed all around them and tiny Crabs burrowed into the sand at their approach. It's beautiful, Joey. I know, he murmured as he closed the distance between them. So are you. Joey's lips were firm against hers, and so too were his hands. Benfin was arrested by the smell of his perfume, earthy and alluring. When Fanfan surfaced for air, she whispered, Oh, Joey. It was some time before they left the alcove. Look, it's the sunset. Fanfan lifted her head at Joey's words to behold the dying sun's sunset radiance. Even as she replied, how beautiful the raven clouds looming in the horizon worried her. Joey, I'm worried about those clouds. Maybe we should go back. Joey looked at her with such determined force and asked, Just a few moments more, I want to save her today. Mm, if you want to, she relented. They were unprepared for how swift, how brutal the coming storm was. The rain poured in torrents, baiting the ocean itself to rise. Winds whipped about them and kept them from moving on the shifting sands. Soaking, shivering, they fought against the storm. Show me! They had been screamed against the wind. Please, don't let go. I won't, Joey shouted back, his hand clasping hers firmly as he struggled upward on the beach. It's my fault. I won't fail you, Fan Fan. Joey. Her scream was lost in the crash of waves against her body. The roar and power of the sea risen to steal her from her lover. She struggled against the water, but it was too much. The violence of the storm swept waves forced her under without contest. The waves had beaten the air out of her lungs. Desperately, she willed herself not to, not to suck in the icy water about her. Will I die this way, she wondered? Will I die like this? A firm hand seized hers and she felt herself being pulled up, up, and up until the cold wind hit her face again. She coughed, sucking the air greedily. Her arms had tightened themselves around Joey's neck without permission. Consent. 
and he was shouting, hold on, Finn, hold on. Joey, you shouldn't have. We can't make it out of here. This way, you'll die too. Don't talk like that, Finn, Finn. We'll make it through. Joey. Thunder crashed in the distance, and the waves pitched and brought a mouthful of salty water against their faces. She coughed and held on to him, thinking, No, this isn't how it should end. This isn't how Joey should die. Something bumped against her leg. A shark? Fear coursed through her body, but before she could react, another wave pushed them under. Joey slumped against her, momentarily not senseless. With burning eyes, Fanfan saw a large silhouette with a slender body and a bottle-like nose. A dolphin, she thought. How lucky. Summoning forth all her will, she put Joey on the dolphin's back. It was the last thing she did before her world went black. I've never known anyone else quite like her. She was such a good and loyal to the last. Never forget her skill and talent. We couldn't have done it without her. Joey sat on a chair by the coffin, his hands around his knees, his crystals dry and his soul too numb to grieve. The pharaoh attendees nodded to him as they passed, he nodded as the feedback. So for the last of the hour, but it seemed to Joey that it was only moments before the crowd disappeared. He picked himself off the chair and turned to look at the coffin for the first time since the funeral started. Eyes closed and still. Fanfan laid inside in a fine hair dress, her hands clasped over her chest. She could have been in a very deep sleep. Joey felt the urge to reach out and lift her away. Fanfan was gone, gone because of him, because she loved him. Trembling, Joey leaned in and laid a single kiss on her lips. 